Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about 3D printing foaming lightweight PLA with the new Bamboo Lab A1 and the new release of Orca Slicer to print good quality airplane parts. Please like and subscribe to our channel and check out our website where you can find files for these models as well as slicing configurations for different slicers, materials, and even a test part to try printing. We're not associated with Bamboo Lab in any way. I bought this printer myself. Please leave a comment if you like the video. So the new version of Orca Slicer 1.9 just came out over the weekend and now works with the new Bamboo Lab A1 printer. Previously, Bamboo Studio was the only slicer that would directly interface with the Bamboo Lab A1. I was going to do a video about it the very same day it came out, but instead I decided to go flying. After all, that's why I do this. Thank you to Andrew from Chinook Engineering for the inspiration and videoing. Also, as I mentioned in my last video, I didn't like the results from using the textured PEI plate that was included with the A1. I was using the plate from my X1 for testing. I had ordered a second one, but it took more than two weeks shipping from New Jersey. My one irritation with Bamboo Lab is their slow shipping and there is no alternative for faster. In part one, I showed that the Bamboo A1 with the Bamboo Studio 1.8 could easily slice and print my airplane files with PLA, PLA+, or PETG easily, high quality, and fast, similar to the X1, but was having difficulty slicing and printing with the foaming material on the A1, even though it would print just fine on the X1. I knew there was something wrong, and this is what I found out. So if you're not familiar with the Orca Slicer, it's an open source version of Bamboo Studio and seems to keep Bamboo Studio in check with the maker community. Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer, and Prusa Slicer are evolving separately, but come together with meaningful upgrades and new features. Now, Orca Slicer 1.9 slices my tail fin. Oh. This silly time-lapse camera. Let me turn that off. Now, Orca Slicer 1.9 is slicing the same part as Bamboo Studio does for the same part for the X1 with similar settings. Hooray, I'm not crazy. The 1.8 version of Bamboo Studio for the A1 is just a little bit off. Looking at the actual printed parts from the A1 in the same material with the same setting, same file, printed with very different results. Comparing the A1 printed part from Orca Slicer to the X1 printed part from Bamboo Studio, and we're getting much closer. I'm not saying that the X1 printed part with Bamboo Studio is the gold standard, but it's pretty good. And the A1 part with Orca Slicer is not far off. So I usually turn on all of my line types to see what is happening and this time-lapse video travel move for the A1 is just very distracting. I thought it might be the source of my problems, but somebody pointed out how to turn it off by turning print sequence from layer to object, which is not very intuitive, but fixes the problem for now. I have a feeling there will be a button for this in the future. Now that I could see that the strange travel moves were not related to the time lapse, I was able to try varying other settings to affect the slicing. The biggest effect came from changing the advanced section outer wall order from outer to inner to inner to outer. Completely unexpected, it fixed most of the issues. Like I said, I think it's a bug. Even with this setting change, a couple of the parts still had minor issues. Again, no issue in Orca Slicer. 
I was able to influence the behavior by rotating the part. I saw this by mistake when I was trying something else. I rotate the part 10 to 45 degrees to find its happy spot. If you go too far, it will just flip the defects to the opposite side. So it's trial and error and time consuming, but it can work. And then there's switching the seam location from back to nearest. I have been using this strategy to clean up some of the remaining areas. Hopefully, with the next update, Bamboo Studio will no longer have these issues. In the meantime, you can use Orca Slicer or these fixes in Bamboo Studio for printing lightweight PLA with the A1. Also, these strategies are good to know for fixing other random issues that might come up in the future. Here are five tips for the Bamboo Lab A1 in printing the foaming lightweight PLAs. As I mentioned earlier, I like the cold plate for my printing, but you need something on the cold plate to get your parts to stick reliably. Oh, come on! But not too aggressive. Even with alcohol, the Vision Miner adhesive is too much for the foaming PLA. The glue stick is easy to put on a thick coat and seems to have the right amount of stick during printing. I use 50 degrees print bed temperature for the foaming PLA and the parts come off without damage. Reapply a little and go again. Looking at the glue stick versus strong adhesive, there is no difference in print quality, even with a bed slinger. So the next tip is putting the print plate on the A1. At first, it seemed kind of wonky. The strong magnets grab the plate before you're ready. And then it's in the wrong place. With all the well thought out user details of the rest of the machine, this did not seem right. Then, after playing with it and looking closer at the center relief for the plate tang, I noticed there are two metal dowels in each corner. If you angle the plate into the relief, hitting these dowels first, it avoids the magnets, aligns the back edge, and you can drop it in place. With a little practice, you can hit the right spot every time. It also helps to have the print bed locked in place by pressing the control button XYZ and pressing any of the XY buttons to energize the stepper motors. Tip number three for the foaming PLA. I like to run a purge before the print with the foaming PLA because the material oozes out so much even if you're running almost back-to-back -back prints. It's very easy to do. You just run a load filament cycle. The X1 does this automatically, and I'm not sure why the A1 doesn't. Or if it does, it's just not enough. You don't even really have to touch the filament, but at one point you do need to touch a button. And then it goes ahead and does a full purge cycle. It only takes about a minute, and it's well worth the time not having to restart a print. Tip number four is to do a first layer check. So because the A1 doesn't have the fancy LiDAR and auto nozzle tuning like the X1, you have to do the first layer check manually. I usually set a timer and come back five minutes after starting a print just to make sure it's doing all right. You can catch it at this point and start again without wasting too much time and material. Or you can wait to check. You should see two very distinct purge lines and a nice well-formed first layer. Doing the load filament purge before printing, tip number three, has mostly eliminated my first layer failures, but I still like to check. 
And tip number five is to have good slicer settings for the files you are printing. On my website, I have lightweight PLA print config files for Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer to use the A1 printer. These config files are tuned and tested to the Sorcraft files. These JSON files are easy to import, work with Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer, and there is a test part to try them out. The config files and test part are free to download and use. Any 200 millimeter tall 3D printer can print the Sorcraft files in lightweight PLA. I suggest using Perusha Slicer and our configuration files for the older printers. Now these settings may work for other file sets, but that's up to you to figure out. I only test and support the Sorcraft file sets. After all, it's really what funds these videos. So please support my channel and buy my models. It's good to have another fast, high quality, new generation printer to help develop my airplane models. The X1 is four times faster than my older printers for regular materials, but only two times faster for the foaming PLA due to material limitations. With similar speed and quality, the A1 should open up my workflow for more innovation. There are still some things I'm figuring out with Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer that I will probably need to do a follow-up video. And in that video, I will describe in more detail the differences in the settings that are specific for the foaming lightweight PLA, show some of the new settings available in Orca Slicer, and maybe even compare some of the new lightweight materials. Hopefully this will be helpful for the A1 and other printing. And after printing all these parts, I need to do some more build videos and publish some new models. So please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.